What's the fastest way to learn SEO? Well, in this video, I'll show you a proven but simple process that will turn you into an SEO pro at lightning speed. And make sure you watch until the end because I'll show you the one thing that helped me learn SEO faster. And the crazy part is that no one teaches you this in school. Keep watching. So step one is to get base SEO knowledge. And you've probably heard the idea that you don't know what you don't know. And this is true in SEO. If you don't know the terminology and the basic concepts, you won't be able to diagnose your SEO performance. So here are the most important pillars of SEO. Number one, crawling, indexing, and ranking. So Google must be able to crawl your website. Otherwise, it can't index your pages. And if it can't index your pages, your pages can't rank. This is the most important part of the SEO process because without it, nothing else matters. So I recommend downloading the free detailed Chrome extension to see if your pages are crawlable and indexable at a glance. You can also go into Google Search Console and see how well Google is crawling and indexing your site. Go to indexing, click on pages, scroll down to the section that says why pages aren't indexed. And you can then click through on any of these issues to investigate further. Keep in mind that you don't want every page indexed in Google. Some pages to keep out of Google's index are login pages, checkout pages, and archive pages because these tend to cause duplicate content. In this case, you can use the no index follow directives. And if you're on WordPress, you can easily manage these pages with popular SEO plugins like Yoast, all-in-one SEO pack and rank math. So the second SEO pillar you must learn is keywords. Now, as of right now, people still use words to search and maybe you'll think it into existence at some point, but even then it would still require words. Keywords are simply how searchers find our websites. But the truth is that most people don't understand how to do proper keyword research. And it stems from not understanding one core principle of keyword research, which is search intent. Understanding search intent will save you tons of wasted effort and time going after keywords that won't produce a return on investment. Also, if you understand it, you'll know what type of page to build to satisfy the intent of the keyword. In other words, the intent of the keyword should dictate your content strategy. So what is search intent? It's simply what a searcher wants to achieve when using Google. By understanding the searcher's end goal, you can deliver the perfect page for them. And when you deliver the perfect page, Google will reward you with rankings. Now, the good news is that you don't need to be a genius to understand search intent. Here are two foolproof ways to understand intent. Number one, use Google. Google will show you the types of pages it believes satisfy the intent of the keyword. It's right most of the time, except for lower competition keywords. With lower competition keywords, Google won't have a big enough pool of pages to pick from. And that means you'll be able to rank easily if you create a hyper-focused page. For example, look at the keyword iMovie crashes when exporting. At one point, Gotcha SEO ranked around number 50 for this keyword with our iMovie review page. This page would never be able to rank for this long tail phrase because it isn't focused enough. So what I did was I created a dedicated page for this keyword. And within a few days of publishing, it hit number one in Google. And yes, this doesn't have much search volume, but compound this strategy across many keywords and you'll start to see why it's so powerful. Now, let me walk you through how a searcher's intent changes during the sales cycle. First, they'll often start with a keyword phrase at the top of the funnel with informational intent, like what is SEO? Once they understand what SEO is, they might discover a laundry list of SEO tools you can use to get the job done. So they might search for a keyword with investigative intent, like best SEO tools. Once they learn all the tools they can use, they'll likely transition into a keyword phrase with comparison intent like SEMrush versus Hrefs. And at this stage, they're brand aware and they're getting closer to the conversion stage. From here, it'll likely lead to a bottom of the funnel keyword phrase like SEMrush review. And then at the very bottom of the funnel, they might search a keyword with transactional intent like SEMrush free trial. And as you can imagine, keywords at this stage have sky high conversion rates. So what I just demonstrated is the searcher's journey through the sales cycle. Your website needs to attack each stage of this searcher journey. And speaking of SEMrush, you can use it to classify keywords based on intent. Just enter your domain into the search bar and go to competitive research, 
click on organic research, and then click on positions. And then look under the intent column. It's by no means perfect, but it's accurate at least 80% of the time. And also I recorded a video showing a test I conducted with SEMrush's new intent feature to see how accurate it is. And I'll have the video in the description below this one. And now let's move on to the third pillar of SEO, which is technical. And don't worry, technical isn't as scary as it might sound. I have elementary coding skills and I've driven SEO results for hundreds of websites. You don't need to be super technical to get SEO results. You just need to know what to look for. So here are two high impact technical SEO opportunities you need to look for in every campaign. Number one, page loading speed. So Core Web Vitals is a confirmed Google ranking factor, so you must take it seriously. Plus, your site's loading speed is critical for conversions. In fact, According to Google, a one second website speed improvement can increase conversions for mobile users by up to 27%. And for a quick page speed analysis, I recommend using Google Web Dev or GT Metrics. For a more comprehensive analysis, you can use Google Search Console, or you can use Screaming Frog and integrate the Google PageSpeed Insights API to see your scores across your entire website. And if you're not scoring well, you should prioritize fixing it because it's a factor that is within your direct control. The second technical SEO pillar you need to learn is site architecture. To keep it simple, site architecture is based on your internal linking strategy. And there are three core elements for optimizing site architecture. Number one, crawl depth. You can use Screaming Frog and just simply look under the crawl depth column. And you should aim to have all pages no more than three clicks deep. In short, the deeper your pages are into the architecture indicates low priority. And Google will follow suit and crawl these pages with much less frequency, and some may not even get indexed if they're too deep into the architecture. Number two, internal link coverage. Like crawl depth, the quantity of internal links is important for a page. Therefore, drive more internal links if you want a page to perform better. Just look under the unique in links column in Screaming Frog to see what pages need more internal link love. Number three, internal link anchor text. Google has confirmed that using descriptive anchor text is best for internal links. That means it's wise to go through and optimize your internal link anchors. For example, don't use generic anchor text like this article for your internal links. Instead, use exact match or partial match anchors with all of your internal links. For example, if I want to link to my article about backlinks, I will use backlinks as the anchor text. Now keep in mind that this rule does not apply to link building. You need to be much more careful when it comes to external anchor text during your link building efforts. And now the next SEO pillar you must learn is content. So you can do all of this other stuff well, but without the right SEO content strategy, you won't get the results you want. Now, there are two types of SEO content you need to know. Number one is keyword focused content. And this is any page that's built around a dedicated keyword phrase. I recommend 80% of your site's content fall into this category if you want more organic traffic from Google. Number two, non-keyword focused content. Some examples include link bait, like this script timer I created using nothing but ChatGPT. Although it does target a keyword, its primary purpose is to serve as link bait. Check the description below to see how I use ChatGPT to create this free tool in about an hour without any coding skills. Now, I could dedicate hours to this topic of SEO content creation, but I'll share some evergreen principles. Number one, satisfy the intent but be the purple cow. Seth Godin created the concept of the purple cow. And in the context of SEO, you want to be the result among the top 10 in Google that stands out. The key to achieving that goal is finding a content angle that hasn't been used. For example, if every ranking result is a list post, you should attack it from a different angle like a case study. Number two, build a moat. In short, your content should be so unique that it's difficult for a competitor to replicate. My go-to method for achieving this goal is unique data and exceptional design. In short, the more you invest in your content from a time and capital perspective, the harder it will be to replicate. And that's why I created content like this case study where we analyze 10,000 keywords to see what's the best CMS for SEO, or this case study where I purchased every keyword research service to find out which one is best. The next SEO pillar you must learn is on-page SEO. So at a bare minimum, you should place your exact keyword phrase in your URL, 
title, meta description, H1, first sentence, and last sentence. And you should also consider adding a variation of your primary keyword in the first H2 tag. This basic optimization will put you ahead of 80% of websites. But if you wanna take it to another level, you should optimize for NLP or natural language processing. You can use a tool like Surfer to accomplish this goal. Just throw your keyword into Surfer's Surf Analyzer and run your page through the tool. Then review their NLP recommendations and look for opportunities to add these keywords to your content. Sometimes you'll need to add some additional content to support these ideas. The next SEO pillar to learn is optimizing for local SEO. So everything you've learned so far will improve local rankings, but some variables are specific to Google's local pack. So first, what is the local pack? The section above the traditional organic results, you'll see when you conduct searches with local intent, like citing contractor St. Louis. And to rank in this local pack, you'll need a couple of things. Number one, have an address in the target location. So if you want to rank in St. Louis, you need a St. Louis address. Number two, secure your Google business profile and populate it with relevant information. Include your keyword in the business description, like citing contractor in St. Louis. Number three, get as many reviews as possible because they're the key to local pack rankings. Number four, make sure your NAPW information is consistent. And NAPW simply stands for name, address, phone, and website. And this information must be consistent across all structured and unstructured citations on the internet. You can use Bright Local's free citation audit tool to see your existing listings and which ones you still need to build. And now the final SEO pillar you must learn is link building. Backlinks, which are links from other websites, are the difference maker in SEO. And Google uses backlinks as votes for your website. So the more votes you have from high quality, relevant websites, the better you'll perform in Google. And Backlinko studied 11.8 million Google search results and found that a site's overall link authority strongly correlates with higher search engine rankings. Now, the question is, how do you get more high quality backlinks? Well, there are many techniques you can use, but the most scalable and reliable technique is creating valuable things that people wanna to link to. And that includes extremely high quality content or free tools. Content should be the foundation of your link building strategy. In short, your content should deserve backlinks. So start with content and then work to promote it like crazy. And that means you're gonna use your owned assets like your email list and social media, and then use traditional link building techniques like guest posting, getting interviewed, or even Haro. I also recommend using Ahrefs Link Intersect tool to see where your competitors have scored backlinks. So go to competing domains and enter your biggest competitors into Ahrefs Link Intersect. Now you know what websites you need to get links on. So those are the foundational elements of SEO that you need to start learning. But please don't fall victim to trying to understand every little intricate detail of this process. It's time for part two of this process, which is getting your hands dirty. And I highly recommend you start a test project. So back in 2011, this is how I learned SEO. I started a baseball pitching blog because I was trying to make money online. It was an absolute ghost town. So I went to Google and searched how to get traffic to my website. And that's when I found SEO and immediately started implementing everything I learned on this first website. I eventually started getting traffic from Google and even made my first real money online through affiliate marketing. I then went on to sell this blog to a former MLB player. But here's why this story matters. I didn't spend months being an academic and accumulating tons of knowledge. Instead, I took action and tried to implement what I learned in the best way possible. And I promise you, this is the fastest way to learn SEO. I have a video about starting a niche website on my channel already, so it'll be in the description below. And this brings me to the most important part of this video. If you wanna learn SEO or any skill fast, you need to understand the idea of just-in-time learning. It's the opposite of how we learn in school. In school, we use just-in-case learning, meaning we learn stuff that we may or may not actually use, like astronomy. But it's in our head, just in case. But just-in-time learning is different. Instead of learning to learn, you only seek out new information when you've hit a roadblock during your action-taking process. For example, let's say I run into the issue of keyword cannibalization, which is when two or more pages are optimized for the same keyword phrase. I would go to Google, find the solution, implement it and keep moving forward. And because I've taken action on this idea, I'll retain that knowledge. In short, 
When you do something, you remember it way better. So if you take anything away from this video, please understand that the fastest way to learn SEO is to take action. Spend 80% of your time doing the work and 20% of your time studying. You already know enough to get started with SEO right now. So like this video and subscribe for more videos. And thank you so much for watching.